You're watching Sahara TV. It's Saturday, November the 19th, 2011. I'm Chika Odua with the African News Brief. Stay tuned for this week's headlines out of Africa. Uh -huh. We began with an update about the Somali-based Al-Shabaab extremist group. The armed group is waging war in an attempt to destroy Somalia's government and impose Islamic law. The group has been accused of blocking foreign aid for the thousands of Somalis suffering from the present famine crisis. And now, Al-Shabaab is recruiting Kenyan children to fight. The number of children recruited is not certain, but experts estimate that hundreds have already joined. Kenya is now trying to contain the violent chaos spilling out of Somalia by creating a buffer zone, which may be called Jubaland. The semi-autonomous zone will help to alleviate Kenya's cost in hosting Somali refugees. According to a series of leaked U.S. diplomatic cables, American and British officials were against a Kenya-backed breakaway state in southern Somalia. More news in East Africa, in Ethiopia, an ongoing clampdown against opposition of Prime Minister Melez Zenawi has led to many Ethiopian journalists fleeing in exile. Other journalists are being tried on charges of treason and espionage. Meanwhile, a teacher reportedly burned himself to death last week in protest of the government. Before pouring gasoline on himself, he reportedly said, I want to show all that death is preferable than a life without justice and liberty, and I call upon my fellow compatriots to fear nothing and rise up to wrench their freedom and rights from the hands of local and national tyrants. Speaking of tyrants, many people would say that Equatorial Guinea's Theodore Obiang Guema is nothing short of, well, a tyrant. The 69-year-old president is Africa's longest-serving leader, having, having been re-elected four times since seizing power in 1979. But he may have to step down in 2016 when his current term ends. Equatorial Guineans voted on Sunday in a referendum on a new constitution that would limit presidents to serve only two terms in office. Moving west of the continent, the Nigerian government has placed a $135 million fine on British Airways and $100 million to Virgin Atlantic. The head of Nigeria's Civil Aviation Authority blamed both airlines for jacking up the price of ticket fares. Reportedly, British Airways and Virgin Atlantic have been informed of the fines and have been given 14 days to respond. We'll keep an eye out on how high this case will fly, but in the meantime, Amnesty International has launched a campaign for Shell Oil to pay for environmental damage caused by spills in the Niger Delta. Shell Oil is one of the biggest companies in the world by revenue, but has neglected to take responsibility for environmental damage in Nigeria, according to Amnesty International. These are just the types of grievances that literary giant Chinua Achebe has spoken against, along with government corruption. He recently refused a national honor for the second time. President Goodluck Jonathan was baffled by Achebe's refusal, but many Nigerian celebrities and entrepreneurs happily accepted the national honors. Nollywood stars Genevieve Naji, Stephanie Okereke and Osita Heme, a.k.a. Papa, smiled and shook hands with the president. Petrol Minister Alison Madweke also got an award. Remember, this is the same lady accused of purchasing a $20 million mansion in Vienna, Austria. Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Said Ibrahim, Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Azubike Ihedrika, and Inspector General of Police Hafiz regime were also awarded. Ihedrika is the same guy that heads the staff that has not been able to control the Islamic militant insurgency in the north. Was regime awarded for his title of the highest rank in a police system notoriously known for corruption and human rights abuses? And Ibrahim seems to have difficulty curtailing piracy of the waters off the Niger Delta coast. Just yesterday, pirates hijacked a Chevron ship in the Niger Delta region. 
Sahara reporters received information that eight gunmen boarded the vessel about 110 kilometers from the Chevron oil field. For our final headline, we want to highlight news that you may not typically hear in regards to Africa. Media images of the continent project starving children, famines, political instability, and ethnic genocide. But have you ever heard of African amusement parks? As in roller coasters, Ferris wheels, bumper cars, cotton candy, that sort of thing? Amusement parks geared towards middle-class Africans are cropping up throughout the continent. At least eight theme parks have opened or are scheduled to open in West Africa alone since 2000. Senegal's Magic Land boasts a water park, nightclub, amphitheater complex, and a 20-acre hotel. Six Flags announced a plan to open a park in Nigeria. That's all we have today for African News Brief this week. For more on these stories and other headlines, check out SaharaReporters.com. I'm Chika Odua. Stay with us. We've got more segments coming up on Sahara TV. We leave you with these images of enjoyment from parks in Senegal and Guinea-Bissau. Session.